for the man unbinding lectin pathway of complement activation, we take a look at several different types of proteins that are produced by the liver in the very early stages of essentially an alert to the nonspecific factors of immunity in your body, which include your liver. There's a cytokine called IL-6. IL-6 is produced very early in um, activation in your tissues and various other organs when there's essentially an early alert due to the presence of microorganisms, bacteria in particular. Bacteria that are phagocytized by macrophages, um, the macrophage in turn releases interleukin-6 because it's eaten up those bacteria. Again, so these are early, early stages of the bacteria trying to establish and colonize and grow and start an infection. So the IL-6 released by the macrophages that have been activated by the bacteria targets various tissues, including the liver. The hepatocytes in the liver release various different proteins called acute phase proteins. The acute phase proteins include serum amyloid protein, C-reactive protein, fibrinogen, mannose binding lectin, and SPA and SPD. Notice that the tiny little illustration of SPA, SPD, and MBL look a good bit structurally like C1Q. We'll come back to that in just a second. Now, of these different acute phase proteins, the two that are important for complement activation will be CRP, or C-reactive protein, and MBL, mannose binding lectin. On the bottom left, we see that CRP is going to bind to particular phospholipids, like phosphocholine, on the bacterial cell surface. CRP is going to act like an opsonin that's going to facilitate better or improved phagocytosis of the bacteria. CRP can also serve as a primary deposit that's going to lead to further deposit of C4 and C2. So it is possible to also activate a part of the classical complement pathway just with CRP. For mannose binding lectin on the right, MBL will attach to mannose residues or mannose sugars on the bacterial cell surface, again serving as an opsidant to enhance or allow easier phagocytosis by the phagocytes like macrophages and neutrophils. And MBL is going to act and function very much like C1Q RS to lead to um, the activation of C3 convertase and C5 convertase on the bacterial cell surface leading to eventually the destruction of the bacteria. So both CRP and mannose binding lectin, MBL, um, produced by the liver in the very early stages of your body getting alerted that there's something in terms of a microorganism trying to establish an infection are very early protection devices or protection mechanisms um, for our bodies. If we take a really close look Again, it's the structural similarities between C1 and MBL. You can see that some of this similar structure is conserved and has similar function. When MBL attaches to the mannose sugars on the surface of the bacteria, it functions very much like C1 attaching to antibody on the bacterial surface. So we can cleave C4 and C2, create those large subunits, deposit those on the bacterial cell surface to make a C3 convertase, cleaving C3 into a large and a small fragment. The C3B combines with the C4B2B on the bacterial cell surface and then creates the C5 convertase, which then will lead to the formation of the membrane attack complex. Notice in this illustration, we also have the comparison of the classical 
MBL and the alternative pathway. We'll take a closer look at the alternative pathway. But this is a nice comparison slide for all three different types of pathways. To take a close-up look at the differences in structure and function of MBL and C1, notice that C1 has the proteases embedded in its little niche or notch where the large C1Q extensions occur and those C1R and C1S subunits um, have enzyme activity that's going to then lead to cleavage of C4 and C2. MBL has a similar resource of enzymes called MASP1 and MASP2. These are also our serine protease enzymes that that's when they get activated when the sort of the lollipop structures of MBL get flexed by attaching to the bacterial cell surface. <clears throat> Those serine proteases, MASP1 and MASP2, become activated. And again, cleaving C4 and C2 into large and small subunits producing the C3 convertase on the bacterial cell surface. Another close-up look at an illustration of MBL on the left and the real transmission electron micrographs on the right. So you can just barely make out how this particular component um, at acute phase protein looks in a real example on the right and then how scientists and artists have interpreted that image on the left. If we take a, a, a look sort of end on at those lollipop-like structures of MBL, you can see that they have specific carbohydrate recognition, what are called domains or areas that are specifically going to interact with the sugars, carbohydrates, on the bacterial cell surface. These are flexible molecules. Both C1 and MBL are flexible. So when they attach, those ends that are attached to their target flex. And that's, of course, what then allows the activation of the serine proteases embedded or attached to um, those flexing structures. So here we have an illustration of MBL attached to the surface of the bacterium. If we have lots of mannose, and even mannose-like sugars like fucose, attached or part of the surface of the bacteria, then we're going to find that MBL is going to be able to very tightly bind to the surface and activate the process of the production of C3 convertase. On the other hand, if we have a bacterial cell surface that has very few sugars on the surface, then MBL doesn't work very effectively. So it doesn't have the same um, affinity or the same effect or outcome with every bacterium. Um, but when we have bacterial cells that have lots of sugars on their surfaces, MBL has a better chance of protecting us from those unwanted invaders.